At first I would like to show you the interface of Cinema 4D. Um, let's start up here. You can tell in the front row there's not much going on. Uh, all the menu is placed here. Above that you can see the title of the file which is untitled 3 in my case and underneath the text menu you can see the main buttons all those colorful icons uh, contain the main functions of the program here in the middle you can see the interface uh, the excuse me the 3d view and on the right hand side you see the object list I will just click here on the main functions on this blue icon to create a cube and you see immediately there's this cube in the middle of uh, the 3D view and in the object list you can see the name cube whenever I click on the cube or on the name cube then I got more options on that in the attribute manager so the usual workflow would be like this I just click delete to remove that cube and do it again I click on the cube and I see it right here in the object manager and further options are here under attributes I will just show you an example you can change the size of the cube right here that's how it works um, of course this is um, context sensitive so whatever I click on I will have different objects uh, options here under attributes then there's another important field it's this one down here um, this is for materials I just double click here in the gray field and I can create my materials here go back to the attribute manager choose a color and apply this material just by moving it here to my object if I would like to change the geometry of my object I can just use those icons here, those buttons I will explain later in detail so let's just start I just delete from uh, the word cube from the list so the cube is removed and this lonely material gets deleted as well so let's start up here with uh, these icons first of all I got just like in a web browser back and forward so I can undo what I've done or just go forward you should know this from pretty much any program next we got this selection arrows always just have a look if you see this small black arrows that means there's more options underneath if you just hold the left mouse button for a second then you get more options so I will explain you any option um, this is just the arrow you need uh, that's just for selections I, I can show you maybe I have a cube here so if I want to select the cube always uh, make sure that you have this button clicked and then you can click on this cube if I have more than one cube in my list say I got another one then I can click on the first hold down shift and click the next so now I could move them at the same time we'll do this later on if I don't want to click on each icon I can use 
this symbol here, just click with the left mouse button, hold it down and go down to rectangle selection. Then you can just like in Photoshop or any other program uh, pull out a rectangle and anything included here gets selected. If I want to select more than one object, again hold down shift and take the next selection. If you want to remove stuff, this uh, is uh, for any option, hold down control key and whatever I got under this rectangle gets deselected. So again, selecting once works just with a left mouse button, hold down shift for additional stuff and if you want to remove stuff hold down control that's the way it works those two options live selection and rectangle selection are what I most commonly use but you got a lasso selection as well works like this so you got both things selected and you got a polygon uh, selection that's just like in Photoshop you just click around it and anything in there gets selected or in this case holding control deselected. So after you selected an item what can you do? There's basically three ways of manipulating them. The first one is moving them, that's the move tool. You can just click on one of those arrows and move it around make sure the object is selected first. It needs to uh, go like this, just click on this cube, then change over to moving and then you can move it around. To move it in a certain direction you first have to hover over this arrow until it gets highlighted and then you can move it in some direction. If you just hold down the left mouse button somewhere here in the gray then the object gets moved parallel to your camera's view so this is not controlled but that's a really quick way of moving stuff around next thing you can do is scaling objects you can scale them like this make them smaller or bigger and again you don't need to hit one of those axes you can just click somewhere in the gray make it smaller or just hold down the left mouse button pull it to the right hand side and it gets bigger so smaller bigger just like that please don't be irritated by the fact that this cube gets scaled uniformly uh, I will explain later why there's no difference between using in this case uh, this um, blue line here and this green line. At the moment that's the same. We'll change that later on. The third important thing is rotating. If you click on this symbol here um, then you can choose one of those bands and just rotate it around. So now you might find that this is not really precise. If I click on stuff and move it around I got those numbers shown right at the center here and there is a way to do this in precise steps. Um, it works like that, just use an arrow, move it in a direction, hold down shift and then you got steps like 10 units so you can move all those items precisely. Same works for scaling. You can scale those things by 10% each step. Just holding down shift and the same for rotating. If I rotate it and hold down shift I can have steps of 5 degrees. Of course you can change those steps but the way it is, it's quite okay at the moment. Th that's the next symbol that changes. It shows all the last actions you did. So just like in the 
history of a web browser you, you can see the stuff you've done and just choose the tool from here and now I got this tool again then you have um, an option to lock or unlock uh, certain axes um, let me just show you for example when I move this item around freely just by clicking left somewhere in the gray uh, there's no way to control where to move it but if I disable an axis for example this one you can see here the green one that the symbol helps you if you lost orientation so if I disable uh, the Y then I can move it freely without the cube to uh, without lifting the cube up you can tell now it's moving just on the floor same as if I disable X then I can just move it from front to back so even or although I didn't uh, click on this cube uh, this arrow uh, I can move it front and back forwards backwards just like this Mm, there's a general advice for you if you click on stuff you can see down here where my uh, mouse is here uh, some advice that's first of all a short explanation what the tool is doing and then there's a shortcut in brackets you might have different shortcuts at the moment but I will show you how to change them in case you like. There's uh, general shortcuts that should work on your system as well. Uh, they are really uh, great if you just keep them in mind. It's quite easy. Uh, for those three buttons you got R for rotate and next to the R key there's E for moving and T for scaling. So you can just tell by hovering over it and looking down here that E is for moving, T is for scaling and R for rotating. So if you have to position stuff quickly just go E, R and T. The shortcuts for X, Y and Z are really complicated. X is X, Y is Y, Z is Z. So, you, in a 3D world, you can see there's um, like um, an origin right in the middle. And from this origin, there goes the coordinates X, Y and Z. And um, you can change between different coordinate systems this is the world sorry the world coordinates and this is local coordinates um, we will see the differences later on then all those symbols with this um, film clap or whatever you call it um, have, uh, have to do with rendering the one with the red line around it is for rendering within the 3D port if you just want to get rid of the rendering just scroll or click somewhere then it's gone this is just a temporarily preview if you click on the middle symbol just for a second then you get the picture viewer uh, that's the place for your final renderings and you can go to file save as to save this picture to your hard disk then the third symbol is render settings in here you can um, choose different options in which quality you want to render your image if you click on the middle 
symbol for longer you got more options I will explain them all when it's time the blue symbols stand for parametric objects I just clicked on it with the left mouse button and hold it down for a while or held it down for a while um, all those blue objects can be chosen that's uh, kind of primitive objects but you can use them as a base for your later models let me just show you the cube for example and um, you can always change them if you just have a look at those really small orange uh, s symbols just hover over them and pull them down so you can basically use any of those shapes to create models really easy I just hit delete to get rid of this and show you the next thing that's splines splines are basically just curves there are two types of splines the first six are to be drawn by yourself and the others others are parametric so they get um, created by by themselves I just show you a b-spline that's a curve and please note this thing cannot be rendered by itself but you can of course use it in combination with other splines to create solid shapes a sort of another um, basic spline is, is the, are those blue ones these are pre-generated shapes you can change a lot with here in the attribute manager you can tell there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Next are those green symbols. Uh, they are to generate stuff out of splines for example. You can tell those symbols all follow the same logic. You have a white spline here and the green area is what you get out of it when you use this option so if I'm a little quick now please don't worry I will explain anything in detail later on but that's just a quick overview next symbol is here we got uh, certain ways to duplicate stuff or to uh, generate things uh, in combination with others um, let me just give you an example you have a cube like here and I just clicked on this array sorry and so by combining those two objects you can create duplicates just like this that's just an example on what you can do out of this list here next we got deformators um, they again don't work by themselves but um, I just use twist to show you what can be done those twisting objects need other objects like this here um, and if you combine them sorry the other way around then you can kind of change the shape of primitive objects so if you think about it those objects are not that primitive anymore you can do a lot just combining those different shapes changing their forms with the options we got here and then using 
for example deformators or those guys here and a lot can be done with this alone but we got more of course just have a look we got skies uh, ways to do fog background foreground graphics and so much more I show you the most simple thing that's the floor it's an endless floor I, I can just render it out using command R and it's just an endless floor it goes forever till the horizon okay um, next we got um, camera object uh, at the moment our camera is just what we see ourselves but of course you can place um, your own cameras that are fixed they are placed just where my camera has been just before and I can move them around we'll have that later last thing on the list up here is the lights um, I think that's kind of obvious what they do I got a light here and this is lightning lighting my cube all right so how do I move within the 3d view that's quite simple um, it's always important in cinema where your mouse is at the moment so um, when I want to um, fly around my objects at first um, just put your mouse within this perspective field and use your scroll wheel if you have one um, to scroll in and out um, keep in mind that it zooms where or the camera flies to the option uh, the, the, um, the place where your mouse is so if I have two cubes and I want to zoom sorry if I zoom to this cube it works like this and if I want to zoom or fly here I just put my mouse there you can see this little cross and then it zooms there all right how can I rotate around stuff um, quite easy just hold down the alt key and hold the left mouse button clicked and then you can turn around your um, item if, if you don't um, click on, on an object it will just turn around the center of the world okay if you want just to pan your view just hold down alt again and use the middle mouse button that way you can move your camera so let me just repeat this holding uh, just scrolling is for going in and out if you don't have a scroll wheel hold down alt and use the right mouse button for zooming in and out uh, you have to combine this with moving uh, the mouse from left to right just try it again hold down alt uh, use the right mouse button and move the mouse to the right then you zoom in if you move it to the left then you zoom out quite easy if you hold down alt again and use the left mouse button you can rotate around stuff And if you hold down Alt and Middle Mouse button, you can pan your view. In case you don't want to use Alt key, but that's what I recommend, uh, you can use those little icons up here. The first is for moving your camera. The second is for zooming in and out. Just put your left mouse button over there just click with left mouse button here zoom in and out and rotating around works just the same so if 
you want to have a different view, like if you want to see all the stuff from top, you have two options to move over. First of all, just click the middle mouse button, nothing else, just the middle mouse button, and you can split the view to perspective, that's what we had before, the top view, uh, the view from right, and the view from front. If you're not sure what is what, just have a look at those little descriptions in the top left corners. To uh, go into one of those views, just um, use your mouse, just go there and click with the middle mouse button again and you will go into a top view for example or I go over to front, click again with the middle mouse button and I'm in there, top, front and so on. If you want to go back to perspective, just use the middle mouse button and you're in it again. In case you don't have a middle mouse button or you just don't want to use it, you can click on this right icon here and then your view gets split or you can go back to this view again. Actually this is all you need to know about the 3D view but I will show you a little more um, but not anything. Um, if you have s mm, certain cameras here you can go to use camera and you will have a list of all those cameras you set in your scene so far. I give you an example. We got a camera here and if I want to go or view what the camera sees I go to camera, use camera and go to camera. That's the identical name with this here in the list. So I go to camera and now I am the camera. If you want to get out of the camera again go to use camera and go to default camera. That's kind of your user camera. What else do we have options? We have uh, different ways to display our objects. Um, my favorite one is Goro Shading Lines. And the difference between Goro Shading and Goro Shading Lines is that you can actually see all the polygons your geometry is made of. That's quite useful. Um, if you want to um, save uh, a bit of performance on your graphics card you can go to quick shading uh, that's available with quick shading lines as well you don't see much of a difference here but you will if you use textures then we got constant shading so that's no shading at all really uh, constant shading lines and you got hidden line so all the lines on the back side uh, are hidden and you got all those lines that's just a typical wireframe. Okay, um, keep in mind that if always you have those um, those borders, those straight lines, that means those are alternative options. So you can go either Goro shading or say hidden line. The same uh, is, goes down for here, wireframe and for example box are different options. Now please be careful, you can tell that for the other three views we got different options. We got lines here preset among display lines and they just show you the isoparms. What does that mean? I show you by um, by this sphere here um, in Goro shading mode or Goro shading lines and wireframe activated um, you can, I just go to Goro shading lines you can see any polygon and the object is shaded so there's um, a, a little specular spot and there's a shadow on the right hand side in the other views you don't see each polygon, you just see like the uh, the main lines. If you don't want this, you can change this display to wireframe. Then you see just as much geometry as there. And of course if you like to, you can change this to Goro shading as well. 
sometimes it's quite useful to have like those lines, but uh, you will find out while working. I'm not going to show you the options. Um, in case you're missing something, you can go here to filter. I just show you, um, for example, by this camera object, if you have a lot of cameras in your scene, for example, and they are in your way, but you don't want to delete them, then you can go to filters, and then there is that um, kind of um, option to, to deactivate camera. Just click there, and the camera still exists, but it's not displayed. So in case you're missing something, just click here on, for example, camera, and now it's ticked again. What else have we got? We got an option to um, change those um, arrangements. Now we have four uh, kind of um, views, but you can reduce them, for example, to two views only. Uh, maybe that's more useful in some cases. Um, so you got all kinds of layouts, arrangement, uh, like this, but I usually stay with the four views. Alright, so now what have we got? Uh, left, um, we got an object list here. Um, First of all, you can rename stuff just by double-clicking. I can double-click on the name Sphere and rename it to Ball. Uh, just by double-clicking on it, type into it and hit Enter. Selecting stuff is easy, just click on it once. Uh, it will get highlighted in white. And if you want to remove stuff, just hit Delete. I click on this, op uh, this uh, object and hit delete and it's gone. So now let's create two cubes. I just click on the first cube, move over it with the mouse, hold down shift, oh sorry, uh, control, uh, hold down the left mouse button and drop it. So I got a copy immediately. That's just the way it works in the object list, just hold down control, uh, hold down the left mouse button as well, pull it downwards and leave it. So you have three cubes now. Uh, just like before, if you hold down shift after you clicked on the first object, you can select more than one object. And if you hold down control instead, you can remove uh, items from your selection. So control is for adding or removing, shift is for adding. If you like you can um, do a rectangle selection here as well. So just clicking on this gray field here um, selects nothing but if you hold the left mouse, mouse button down you can select more objects. So what about you get you have many objects and you want to rename them really quick just double click on the first item type something now you don't have to click with your mouse but just use the arrow key instead go down with the arrow key type next stuff and use the down key again and type some more. If you hit enter then, just at the end, then all the objects were mm, renamed. If you want to give more than uh, one object the same name, just select all those objects, go down to the attribute manager, go to basic, and then you will find the first uh, field called name and in there it says multiple values. That means we got different names here at the moment but you can just click in it, call them for example room, hit enter and now immediately all those objects are renamed with room. 
now uh, it's getting a little more complicated. Um, we'll talk about um, parent-child re child relations. So there's a way, or there's more than one way, but the easiest way to have one object controlling the others is by putting them in a hierarchy. If you look at these uh, lines here, you can tell by this straight vertical line that all the objects are um, now independent of each other. So when I move this cube, it does whatever it wants and the others don't follow. But if I, let me just, to make it easier, call this A, B and C. If I just want this cube called B to follow cube A, all I have to do is taking cube B, moving it over uh, cube A. You can tell this by this little white arrow next to my mouse cursor that when it goes down uh, and I um, uh, drop it here, then cube B will be uh, parented by cube A. So let's just do this, make sure the white arrow goes down, um, drop it, and now uh, I have the cube B um, under cube A. You can tell by those uh, li this line here, and now something funny happens. I only click on um, A, so that's highlighted, that's less highlighted, so when I now move um, cube A, B follows automatically. The same goes now for scaling and rotating. So that's the parent on top, and that's the child below. You can tell by this little symbol, and if you move uh, cube B, that's the child, uh, cube A doesn't react. So that's typical of such a relation. A moves, B comes with it, B does whatever it wants. Of course you can put C to it as well. You got two options now. You can put it on the same hierarchy level like B and C, or you can just take C and put it underneath B. The difference should be clear. If it's parented just like this, it works like that. But if I move B now, C is not influenced by this. If I put C under B, it works like that. A controls the whole thing. B influences C and C is independent. How do you remove stuff from that hierarchy? Just pull it out. Click with the left mouse button, pull it down. If the symbol, uh, the, the arrow, the white arrow shows to left, it means it's out of the hierarchy. You can tell that it worked just by this straight line. Uh, please consider it w as well that it doesn't uh, um, play a role. It, it's not important where um, you put stuff, in which order, if C is on top, that doesn't change a thing. The only thing of importance in terms of hierarchy is those lines. Of course, there is a way to group uh, objects as well. Just um, select them, and now you can hit Alt-G for grouping, Alt-G, and anything will put under a null. A null is a invisible little coordinate, that's this one, and under this coordinate I can rename this of course as well, in cubes maybe, uh, all my objects are placed. So now I can move the null object or rotate it or scale it and anything in this group will follow. This is cool for textures later on as well. If you put a texture on uh, this null object, say a red texture, then all those grouped objects under this null called cubes 
will turn red as well. If you want to copy stuff, like here for example, now only C is red, and I want to give the same tag, this texture, to um, another cube, you can just do so by holding down control and the left mouse button at the same time, and now I copy the tag. I just delete this, we will do this very often, so don't worry. Um, we have another uh, way of sorting things, we can not only take use groups, if you want to have stuff out of the group just pull it out, just like that. Um, you can copy cubes, uh, sorry, groups as well. So I got two now. So copying should be really, really quick. Or you can do so over the 3D view, holding down control and you got a copy. So populating stuff with trees or something should be really quick. Um, there's another option to um, kind of um yeah um put stuff in order in uh, in terms of um having groups for them there's a layer system integrated in cinema 4d um you can add stuff to a new layer for example just by clicking within this gray ball and say add to new layer and in this case cinema choose a blue layer please note the objects within that group are not in the blue layer yet. You should do it like this. Um, you would either have to say add to layer and then choose the blue one or which is way faster you click on the top thing in the list like on the parent with the middle mouse button and then all the sub objects are highlighted as well. That's the difference between clicking left and they are just grayish. That means they are not selected themselves but with the middle mouse button just once anything gets selected and now I could um, put them to uh, the given layer um, maybe here nah. add to layer layer. Now they are all blue. It might be easier um, to click here on again and say layer manager and then you get a, um, a list of all those layers. You can name them just like objects. Call them for example buildings. If you double click here again you can say trees and so on. So you could easily um, I just take a ball here and drop, drag and drop the sphere to the trees and now I got a nice way of seeing what layers I uh, have. Uh, those layers are not just uh, play on colors, they are pretty useful. Um, I will just show you how it's done. You can, for example, um, click on this little eye icon here to say don't show uh, those objects in my 3D view. You can say don't render them. I will just show you. I said buildings not rendered, but trees are. So now when I hit um, control, uh, sorry, command R, uh, the cubes are not rendered, although they are in my scene but the sphere is. So now I click on it again anything that's in my scene gets rendered um, so just um, try it out yourself um, you can activate it in the 3D view and you can disable it for rendering. If you don't want to use the layers manager, you can, by the way, click here on the right hand side to change between attributes 
uh, manager and layers manager. Um, there's a simpler way of, of doing this. I mean, this is really powerful. So make sure all those icons are turned on again. But there's an easier way to uh, show things in 3D view um, or disable them for rendering by using those little points here. And the logic is quite simple. If it's gray, that means it's neutral. So in the uh, usual case, it gets uh, rendered and displayed. If you put this on green, that means uh, even if the top object is turned on, uh, off, the, the um, object below uh, will be displayed. You can tell by this when I say to the top guy, uh, don't be displayed, then all those sub subs follow. If you say for a single item, no, you are uh, displayed, then the green symbol will make this happen. So the bottom um, tag is for not rendering, so you can tell all items are displayed, but if I render them, this group doesn't get rendered. So uh, I can do this for a single object, say C, I just click on it twice, and now uh, cube number C doesn't get rendered. I could even do both at the same time, not displayed and not rendered. Please just try out yourself to get the hang out of it. Then for parametric symbols and lights, there's a way of deactivating stuff just by clicking on uh, those ticks and crosses. So that is pretty much the same as if I had both turned on red in this case. So I can, sorry, put things on like this or off like this. So now for some advanced options in the Layers Manager. Um, I not only have the possibility to turn on their display or their if they are rendered or not, I can even exclude them from the list here. That's really useful if you want to tidy up that list. It can get really long, especially in uh, bigger projects like architectural projects. You will be happy about this little button. And uh, in order not to mess up your work, you can even protect it by clicking on this item, on this icon here and then there's no way of deleting it by mistake or moving it around. Um, the last symbol I want to discuss is this one here. You can turn on and off animations here. So in case if something in this layer blue is animated but you don't want to see it right now, you can just put it so that it's gray and then nothing's gonna move. The others are not so important for beginners, so let's please make sure anything is turned on so it doesn't look gray like this but straight like this and go back to attributes. Um, then there's one tag left, those um, symbols behind this vertical line are tags uh, this is one of the easiest tags. It's called Fong Tag. Um, it makes your objects appear more smooth. I can so show you by on on this um, ball here. Just click on the Fong Tag, and the, there's um, the most important um, part is this one here. Uh, it's the Fong Angle. If you put it below a certain degree it will look like um, a disco ball. Uh, of course, in, in this case, um, I would have to remove the render, render perfect uh, tick here, but for most solid objects, it's, it will be just like this. If you want to show 
each uh, polygon just like that if you want to have really really straight edges just like in uh, certain lamps then um, you can go uh, you can put the phone angle really low if you put it up mostly between 80 and more than 40 then it will look rather smooth in the middle alright we will discuss this again while we're doing some modeling work but all I wanted to tell you is that there is um, tags and you can move them around and copy them you can click on them so they are highlighted and delete them you you should know how to do this so now there's few more things I would like to show you um, first of all the attribute manager down here just click on the cube and uh, there are more options underneath so that's a really handy thing if you just want to see basic options click on those and all the others will not be shown and now something cool if you want to see more than one thing just hold down the left mouse button and move over more objects and they all will appear down here and if you click control again those things are going to be removed so for example I could show basic and holding down shift I click on object so I can show them or see them at the same time so basic is um, um, just for naming really and and stuff you can do up there as well for example uh, rename them here a cube for example um, now it changed he up here as well um, you can see and change in what layer it is uh, up to layer trees so I just changed the layer but that's all kind of double it's just the same like doing it up here uh, visible in editor you had the same here remember those red and green signs so should be all the same um, in case you don't use textures or just for your own orientation you can turn on colors so you can for example have some objects appear red and others green uh, that might be might be useful I just turn it off then you got coordinates to any object now this is really important uh, I will show you by a new object I just take them all you can hit command A as well to select them all and now I hit delete so they are gone and now I click on the cube again and I just want to show you the coordinates um, as you can see by this little icon here um, anything is orientated by X that means left and right positive x is right negative x is left y up is going up and y negative is going down and z is for the depth so following this logic we can move this cube to the right hand side by raising this value x so it's moving to the right lowering it moves it to the left hand side there are many ways to change those numbers one way is just going over the mouse you don't even have to click into that field just scroll it and you're going uh, to move uh, this object you can um, go with the left mouse button on those arrows that's good for speedy movements so just hold left mouse button down and move your mouse upwards or downwards so that goes really quick or you just click on it twice like a double click and you can put in numbers like 200 and now a thing that's really cool if you aren't good at maths you can do stuff like 15 times 3 so it just works like a calculator so I can go 180 divided by 7 and uh, it'll just calculate even formulas or stuff like that uh, okay that shouldn't be too difficult putting it up and down here by using 
the uh, y uh, value and the same for z. Now next thing is the scale. So independently of the real size of this object, you can make it 10 times bigger, but just say in the width dimension. Or just put in tens anywhere. Sorry. Uh, 10, 10, 10. That means the object gets scaled 10 times bigger than it actually is. Putting this on 111 will lead to the original state. Now that's quite useful if you import objects. There's a nice way of scaling them down, for example, by putting in 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Cinema 4D automatically puts in a zero in front, so now this item is 10 times smaller. Now we got um, a way of um, rotating stuff around. Um, um, we got rotating H, P and B. Uh, that comes from how airplanes uh, are um, rotated, like um, they have, they can pitch and bank and stuff like that. So you can put in values here to uh, change the orientation. Okay, let's get on with uh, the object and uh, depending on what you clicked on before, um, under the object tab you will find different options anytime. So if you look at uh, it in this case there's uh, possibilities to change uh, the size of the cube and um, you can divide it into segments but you can do a lot more like making it round and stuff and as I said if you got some different objects like uh, for example a cone then there is a whole lot of different options and I would really encourage you to just fool around with those settings and just look what you come up with um, that's not only the case uh, for um, parametrical objects like this one but um, for pretty much any thing you can click on there's more options even for the selection tools you will find a lot of different object um, options um, basically um, this is all you need to know about the object manager um, of course you can um, find the tags here that's the last thing you will find here and now we will change over to the material manager uh, the material manager is located on the bottom left and um, you can create a new material by either double clicking on the gray area here just like that or by going to create new material. That's the same. Um, you should rename those materials right from the start. I double click on mat and call it, for example, concrete. And again, you can go to the attribute manager and change the look of the material and now there are two ways to applying the material to an object first you can just drag and drop it over through the cube uh, if the 3d view is really crowded I wouldn't do it that way I would rather go back that's what I just did uh, you can use control uh, sorry command Z for that as well and then you take the material and just drag it over to the object list um, if you want to copy paste material just um, hold down control and drag and drop it so you got an exact copy of that same material you can call it wood and 
color it differently. So that's what you can do with the material manager. We are going into more detail in a different tutorial, um, but that's it for now. Then we have more options to alter the geometry we just selected, um, but that's what you can do here. I will show you all these buttons um, when we care about modeling. Uh, for now that's it. What I would like to show you is one more thing. Wherever you are within those menus and if you don't know what an option is good for or you would expect something that doesn't work, just try the following. Do a right click on the name and go to show help. That's the very last thing you can click here and that uh, pops up uh, help text that's like a whole manual uh, of uh, things you can just click around or search for uh, something uh, like camera and these are the results so that should be another way how to learn Cinema 4D I will just close it now and that's it for now um, you can skip the rest of the video if you are not interested in how to customize this interface and if you don't care about the uh, preferences of the program. That's what we're doing now. Okay, as I told you, edit preferences is the way to change stuff about how the program works. First of all, um, we got a new window here called Preferences and on the left bar you can switch between a lot of options. Uh, I won't explain any tiny option. Uh, we'll focus on the most important stuff. First of all, you can select different languages. I got German and English installed, but there's more packages to be downloaded. As far as I know, there's at least Italian and Japanese. Uh, you can change the look of the program. Um, if you like it better, you can have it dark. You can change fonts, wouldn't do that. Um, then that's kind of handy. You can tell where new objects or objects you copied before are going to be pasted within this list. So this doesn't make much sense now because we just have one item but now later on if you have hundreds of items you are quite happy about the option to say always put pasted objects on top of the list right here or put them right next to the object I selected and so on. You can change the navigation if you like. That's about where the camera is um, kind of um, rotating around, but I'm not going to change that. And maybe for now don't do it as well, so we are on the same track. Uh, I changed the zooming speed a little because I was, it, was, it felt just too slow on my mouse. Um, if you got any problems starting up the program or it crashes after a while, you can remove this tick after using use OpenGL. Um, so if if you sort of remove that tick, then if you uncheck it, then it's um, not using the graphics card anymore, as far as I know. Um, File handling is quite important too. Um, you can tell it how many files it shows in the list. That's right here, file, recent files. I just had 40 because I had the room for it. That's this here. Um, 
you can oh okay I didn't notice I clicked on that sorry um, just file close um, you won't have that problem I guess um, you can do a lot of stuff like auto saving every five minutes and it even creates copies I don't want this I want to have the control myself when I save then pretty important is texture paths if you're always using the same kind of textures then you can choose a path clicking here uh, saying you're just using your texture path go to open and then this folder is included here and when you open um, documents later on it's automatically looking for files within those directories listed here then important for people who are not living in Europe uh, I think it's uh, um, what kind of units you're used to you can change it to miles yards inches and so on I stay with centimeters here but keep in mind this is just um, concerning the display that had nothing to do with uh, the size of the geometry so you're not changing this um, then what I like is um, showing the colors when I for example go to this material I want to have the HSV model instead of RGB color but that's kind of uh, personal preferences um, you can change the undo depth so how many step, steps you can go back I went for 50 the higher the number you put here the more memory will be used up um, you shouldn't probably change this here I don't uh, yeah we're not gonna change this stuff if you're importing data you can change uh, for example the scale it comes in here uh, we're going to discuss this in the next tutorial in detail and if you really want to you could change pretty much any color you see in this interface I'd be very careful with that because they really thought about how they color each thing if if you mess it up um, you will have to reset it so that was a really quick overview you can't really call it overview but uh, of the preferences okay so now let's create our own shortcuts we already have a few of them if you just hover over over those buttons you can tell by looking at the bottom left corner of the screen right here where my mouse is just now um, that we some shortcuts are already applied like E for moving and so on but it might be very useful if, if we had our own um, shortcuts for things we use quite often you can do so by going to window customization customize commands and um, it works like that we have a really impressive list of things we could shortcut but it's not really easy to find stuff here so it might be easier to um, just look for the buttons we would like to to put shortcuts on um, at first I did or I created shortcuts for a thing I didn't show you yet um, but I mainly use things like point mode edge mode and polygon mode 
and as you can tell I have a shortcut here for those things namely 4, 5, 6, 7 for moving the whole model and then I have 8 for moving texture axis, 9 for selecting um, by life selection and zero for rectangle selection. Apart from that I used number one for creating a polygon automatically, two for a cube and three for a cylinder. Apart from that there is a little circle right next to number one um, and I put the null object on there so that's all shortcuts for those things here and I find them quite useful and now I tell you how to do this you go to window customization customize commands you hover over for example live selection you just type in the name you read down here it said live selection here so what you type in the name filter is live selection you make sure you choose the right icon it's this one in this case you should always check that and then it works like that you click in the shortcut field whatever you read there maybe there's nothing in there you go to delete first then you click in there then you use the key of your choice in my case it's nine and then I say assign. In some cases there might pop, pop up another window saying there's a conflict, there's another key already or another function applied to that key and then you can just say overwrite or something like that. So I will repeat this step um, with for example selecting the whole model just go over there, read use model mode, okay I go to window, customization commands and I say model and there it is I can tell what it does and if there is a shortcut applied, in my case it is in yours maybe not so we just do this over I go to shortcut, say number 7 assign and then it's done. So now without clicking I can say go to 1 so a polygon is created, I go to E it's moved, R it's rotated, T it's scaled and pretty much anything should work, work the way I want to. 2 for cube and so on so now one thing I forgot to tell you which is really usable as well you might have following situation there's an object right here and there's a, another one copied more over here I just hold down control and left mouse button and now you're zoomed out and you quickly want to zoom in just press H on your keyboard to zoom so you can see anything that's in your scene so if you're closer and hitting H will bring you back if you're far away H will zoom you to your objects so what if you want to zoom just to the one or the more objects you selected click on them and hit S for selected and it's gonna zoom to that selected object that was it about how to customize your shortcuts. So you may want to change the overall look of your interface. There's uh, one really easy thing. It's just um, changing the width of all those elements. Um, just by going over the edges you get this symbol here and then you can make stuff smaller. 
Um, of course, you can remove stuff you don't need. For example, if you are into um, visualization of still images, then you might not need uh, this timeline here, which is more useful for animation. So you would just remove it. You can't do this uh, immediately by closing. You first have to go to uh, Window, Customization, and then you have to remove this highlighted thing called Lock Layout. Uh, that's a new kind of security thing, so just click on it so it's deactivated. And now it should be possible, just use a right click and say close. So now this thing here is gone. Next we want to close the thing right here which uh, with the play button and hit close again. So that saves quite some, some space. Um, now let's just uh, for a try, maybe you don't like it, but uh, just for a try we move this part here on the left hand side there. So just go to with the right click on this really rough surface and say undock. So now this is a really 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 tiny um, window and now we can place it here for example you see everywhere now I have the left mouse button uh, I ha still hold it so I can move it wherever I want and it highlights the edges where it would land so when I drop it right here it's there but now there's a problem it's still vertical so with a right click you can uh, change the orientation that's called change orientation right here and now we got it next to the other menu uh, that gives me even more space I don't know if you're used to this but I don't find it that bad you can even make uh, put windows to uh, underneath other windows for example how about just for a try uh, taking the material manager underneath the object manager or maybe next to it. Uh, let's try both. First of all I don't have to undock it first I can just click here on the rough surface with the left mouse button drag it over so it's right next to all those windows the vertical bar goes, uh, vert uh, goes straight here it's really long and I can just leave it, uh, drop it and now I got a material manager which stands right next to my object manager. That's pretty useful. Uh, just imagine we have loads of materials later on in an architectural project and you don't have much much space to write down for example concrete uh, I don't know, uh, uh, building A and Cinema 4D by standard only shows you a few letters uh, which is not, not enough. So how do you change this? Um, there's a way to just say um, function, sorry, edit and then you go to material list and then, yeah, your bots, uh, like those uh, previews, get smaller, but um, you have much more space to, to write down stuff. Uh, that's pretty good. And you only have a really short way, for example, if, say, this is your concrete wall, and you want to apply this, you just can switch over there, and it's done. So if you are into architectural stuff, you might like this layout. Um, now this is far too big and wasting too much space. So I take this here, just with the left mouse button, and move it maybe 
uh, here like this to the bottom so that's pretty close to the layout I have personally I don't want to uh, kind of force you to use this one but it's not too bad um, one thing I wanted to show you which I will remove again is to put the material manager for example underneath other stuff for that you just take this rough icon and put it over the other like here now I drop it and now I have something like this here's my object list there's my material list gone and so on so now what do I do when I want to pull it out again I just take it pull it out drop it here apart from the whole screen popping it's very well done I think okay so now how do we save this layout it's pretty easy you just go to window customization and then you go save layout as and you can choose a file name like my layout or something and save it in layout and then you got it in this list here I called my stan user and so I can even take that file and move it to a different computer to a different working place just take the, those files with you and uh, cinema should look the same anywhere you work I hope this tutorial helped you to get into Cinema 4D and next we're gonna care about uh, how to import CAD models and how to correct mistakes or stuff that's not right into the geometry and how to correct that.